Welcome to Wellness with John, resources to help you thrive. I'm John Peters, a therapist who's been in practice for 25 years, working with thousands of patients. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about a common experience that people have when experiencing grief, which is grief hallucinations. Stay tuned. Okay, so a very common experience that people have when going through the grief process is having grief hallucinations. Grief hallucinations are when somebody experiences a lost loved one or pet and you actually see them or you hear them or you smell them. So you're having some sort of sensory experience of the person or the pet and they're not actually there because they have gone on but but you're actually experiencing some sort of sensory experience related to that person this is different from having a sense of a person's presence um, or having something be a very strong associated trigger so <clears throat> let's say somebody loved to eat pizza and then every time you smell pizza, it's, it's, in, it's a very powerful trigger to remind you of that person. That's not a grief hallucination. But um, an example of a grief hallucination would be literally hearing the person's voice from another part of the house, that kind of thing. And studies who, that have looked into this have shown that it's very, very common uh, one study uh, reported that as much as 60% of people going through grief have experienced grief hallucinations. Um, so it's very, very common. And I've found that when I talk with people about grief, that this is one of the central issues. There are really two reasons when people are going through grief that they feel kind of crazy. Actually, three. Okay. One is grief hallucinations, and this just happened just a few days ago. I talked with another person who said, I think I'm going crazy because I, 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 I am feeling my loved one literally pat me on the shoulder at, at different times, right? Um, so no, you're not going crazy, but I think it's a common feature of grief, and it's, it can be unsettling even when it's a relatively pleasant experience, right? Um, because it's so out of the ordinary of what we experience, so it can make a person feel like maybe they're not grieving correctly or that they've gone crazy. Um, but number two, the, number, the second reason that people often feel like they're not grieving correctly or that they're going crazy is when their grief doesn't fit the conventional model of the grief stages. And I made a video about that. I'll post a link up here if you want to go take a look at that. But grief happens in lots of different ways, and it doesn't follow neat, tidy stages. And sometimes when the way someone's experiencing grief doesn't fit that model very well, then the person feels like, well, maybe I'm, I'm not doing it right, right? Um, the third reason that people th often think that they're not doing it right or they're going crazy is when it lasts for a long time. And this is partly because of the very constrained idea. Like a lot, of, a lot of workplaces give you three days for bereavement. Like what the heck are you going to do in three days, right? Um, and so there are these pressures to kind of get it done quickly. But grief is a process that often takes a very, very long time. Um, there's also the myth of closure, right? Uh, that makes people think that somehow they're going to like finish it and be done with it and it's not going to pop back up in some unsettling way at some point or some way that they have to deal with actively and so that's the third reason people often feel like they're crazy but anyway back to hallucinations um <clears throat> so hallucinations are not the same as going psychotic in fact the research has looked into the relationship between grief and other mental health issues has shown that yes there is an association between grief and an increased risk for certain types of anxiety and clinical depression, um, but uh, there isn't evidence so far in the research I've looked at that says that there's actually an increased risk of psychosis, so developing a frank psychotic disorder because of 
grief that there isn't an association there even though a hallucination is a hallucination and hallucination is a psychotic feature of a psychotic disorder right um but people don't go psychotic because they're having grief hallucinations now i will say that one way that we therapists think about how to make sense of grief hallucinations in terms of whether it impacts what a person could be doing for themselves. Um, here's something that, that we pay attention to. And, and one is that are the hallucinations what we call egocentric or egodystonic? Um, and so our, our ego is who we are and how we want to experience ourselves and be in the world. And so when something is egocentric, it fits with that. So if I experience a grief hallucination and it's consistent with myself and it doesn't provide any sort of conflict, then, then that's egocentric. It fits with me and, and how I want to be in the world and how I want to remember and relate to the, the person or pet that's passed. An egodystonic hallucination would be one where there's some sort of conflict, you know, so if you imagine the lost uh, person, um, you know, saying something that is very mean to you, right, and, and hurtful, um, and so it, it, it produces a conflict because it's not congruent with your ego. And uh, that, I think, is more likely to happen when either the the survivor had a very conflicted relationship with the, the lost loved one, um, or if the survivor is struggling with identity and existential issues themselves, like issues of self-esteem and self-worth, right? So my advice would be that, number one, if you're having grief hallucinations, um, they're probably part of your normal grieving process, and it's part of how we maintain a connection with the lost loved one or pet. But uh, they, they tend to kind of morph over time and they tend to extinguish over time. Um, if you find them troubling for any way, and especially if they're ego dystonic, so they're providing some sort of conflict or unpleasant experience, that is a good time to talk with a therapist about working through what might be related to that type of experience so that, A, you just don't have to have that troubling fundamental issue and be so that it doesn't maintain a troubling fundamental issue like let's say low self-esteem or so low self-worth right sometimes therapeutic support is a really good idea to work through complicated relationships with lost loved ones because you know the the, the thing is that relationships are a mixed bag the fact that someone died does not make your relationship to them simple um, you know, the complexity that existed up to the, the point of their, their death um, just doesn't evaporate and become vanilla just because they died, right? So sometimes therapeutic support is very helpful to work through those types of complications because they can exist for the self even after the other person who was involved in the actual relationship has died. Those complications can continue to affect someone. So, you know, something to consider in terms of the decision to get some therapeutic support for your grief. But anyway, I wanted to make this video because grief hallucinations are common. They're, you know, more uh, people than not experience them in one form or another. And they can be unsettling in the sense that they are so strange in terms of what you expect to experience. But and that can be true even when they are egocentric, but um, they're not really in and of themselves a problem or an indication that you're crazy or you're doing something wrong. So anyway, thought I'd make this video just because it's so common and um, thought it might help some of y'all out there. And uh, feel free to hit like if you like this video because it teaches YouTube who to share these videos with. And uh, if you like these types of videos, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in another video soon.